The Berenstain Bears Love Their Neighbors by Jan and Mike Berenstain. Subscribe for more Berenstain Bear Books. The Bear family was quite proud of their handsome treehouse home and they worked hard to keep it neat and tidy. The trim was freshly painted, the front steps were scrubbed, and the windows were washed. The lawn was mowed and the flower beds were weeded. Even the leaves of the tree were carefully trimmed and clipped. Most of their neighbors took good care of their homes as well. The pandas across the street were even bigger neat nicks than the bears. It seemed they were always hard at work sweeping and cleaning. Farmer Ben's farm just down the road was always in apple pie order too. Even his chicken coop was as neat as a pin. A place for everything and everything in its place. That's my motto, said Farmer Ben. The Bear family had a few neighbors whose houses were positively fancy, like Mayor Honeypot, the bear who rode around Beartown in his long lavender limousine. His house was three stories tall and built of brick. It had a big brass knocker on the front door and statues of flamingos on the front lawn. Even more impressive was the mansion of Squire Grizzly, the richest bear in all bear country. It stood on a hill surrounded by acres of lawns and gardens. Dozens of servants and gardeners took care of the place. The Bear family was proud of their neighborhood, and they got along well with all their neighbors. Except for the Bog Brothers. The Bog Brothers lived in a run-down old shack not far from the Bear family's treehouse. But what a difference! The roof was caving in and the whole place leaned to one side. There was junk all over the yard. Chickens and dogs and cats ran everywhere. A big pig wallowed in the mud out back. Those bog brothers, Mama would say whenever she saw them. They're a disgrace to the neighborhood. Yes, agreed Papa, they certainly are a problem. One bright spring morning, the Bear family was working outside, cleaning up and fixing up when the Bog Brothers came along. They were driving their broken down old jalopy. It made a terrific clanking racket. As they drove past the treehouse, one of the Bog Brothers spit out of the car. It narrowly missed the Bear's mailbox. Really, said Mama Shock, those Bog Brothers are a disgrace. I agree, said Papa, getting the mail out of the mailbox. I'm afraid they're not very good neighbors. Papa looked through the mail and found a big yellow flyer rolled up. He opened it and showed it to the rest of the family. Come one, come all to the Big Bear Town Festival. Help celebrate our wonderful neighborhood. Games, rides, contests, prizes, fireworks. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Horace J. Honeypot Mayor. Oh boy, said sister and brother. It's like a big block party. Can we go? It certainly sounds like fun, said Mama. What do you think, Papa? Everyone in town will be there, said Papa. We ought to go too. Yay, cried the cubs. So on Saturday morning, they all piled into the car. They had a picnic basket and folding chairs. They were looking forward to a day of fun and excitement. But as they drove along, the car began to make a funny sound. It started out as a pocket, pakara, pakara, but it soon developed into a pakara wheeze, pakara wheeze. Oh dear, said Mama. What is that awful sound the car is making? Just then, the car made a much worse sound, a loud clunk. It came to a sudden halt, and the radiator cap blew off. They all climbed out, and Papa opened the hood. I guess it's overheated, said Papa, waving at the cloud of steam with his hat. Oh no, said Sister, how are we going to get to the Beartown Festival?
Maybe someone will stop and give us a hand, said Papa, hopefully. Look, here comes a car. Let's all wave. Maybe they will stop. It was Mayor and Mrs. Honeypot in their long lavender limousine. They were on their way to the festival too. Their car slowed down, but it didn't stop. The mayor leaned his head out of the window. Sorry, we can't stop, he said. We're late already. I'm master of ceremonies today. I've got to be there on time. I'm sure someone will stop to help you. And he pulled away with a squeal of tires. Hmm, said Papa. Maybe someone else will come along. Soon, another car did come along. It was Squire and Lady Grizzly being driven to the festival in their big black Grizz Royce. They slowed down too. Lady Grizzly rolled down her window. I'm afraid we can't stop, she said. We don't have time. I am the judge of the flower arranging contest. We simply must hurry. And with that, they pulled away. Maybe no one is going to stop, said Sister. Maybe we're never going to get to the festival. One of our neighbors is sure to stop and help, said Mama. After all, that's what neighbors are for. Yeah, said Brother, but do they know that? A cloud of dust appeared down the road. Here comes someone now, Sister said eagerly. The dust cloud drew closer and they could hear a clackety racket getting louder. Uh-oh, said Papa, shading his eyes and peering down the road. If that's who I think it is, it was. It was the Bog Brothers. They came clanking up in their rickety old jalopy and screeched to a halt. First one, then another, then another of the Bog Brothers came climbing out. Howdy, said the first Bog Brother. Hello there, said Papa. I'm Lynn, said the first Bog Brother. I can see you're having some trouble with your vehicle. Well, yes we are, said Papa. Maybe we can give you a hand, said Lem. That would be very neighborly of you, said Papa. Hey, Clem, hey, Sham, called Lem. Get out the rope. The other two Bog Brothers rooted around in the back of the jalopy and came up with a length of rope. They hitched it to the back bumper of their car and tied the other end around the front bumper of the bear's car. All aboard, said Lem. The bear family climbed hastily back in their car. The Bog Brothers pulled away, towing the bear's car behind them. Where are they taking us? asked Mama. Papa shrugged. At least we're moving. Brother and sister hoped the Bog Brothers weren't taking them down to their old shack. They didn't want to meet that big pig. They soon pulled into a run-down old filling station. Someone who looked like an older version of the Bog Brothers came out. Hello, Uncle Zeke, said Lem. Hello, nephew, said Uncle Zeke. What can I do you for? These poor folks broke down on the road, said Lem. You reckon you can fix them up? Let's take a look said Uncle Zeke. He looked under the car's hood, banged and clanged around, and came up with a length of burst hose. Raider hose, he said. Busted clean open. I should have another one of them around here somewheres. Uncle Zeke rummaged around behind the filling station and soon came back with a radiator hose. He banged and clanged under the hood for a few more minutes. There, he said, wiping his hands. Good as new. We'll top off the radiator and you folks can be on your way. Thank you very much, said Papa. Relieved, he shook his hands with Uncle Zeke and the Bog Brothers. Thank you, said Mama, brother and sister. Honey Bear waved. How much do we owe you, asked Papa, reaching for his wallet. Nothing, said Lem. This one is on us. After all, we're neighbors. That's right, said Mama with a gulp. We are. In fact, how would you neighbors like to come over to our house for dinner next week? Papa, brother, and sister all stared at Mama with their mouths open. 
That's right neighborly of you, said Lem. Don't mind if we do. Shem's cooking has been getting a bit tiresome. Too much possum stew. We were on our way to the Beartown Festival, said Papa. Would you like to join us? Sure would, said Lem. We ain't been to a big shindig since Grandpap's 90th birthday party. So the Bear family drove to the Bear Town with the Bog Brothers and Uncle Zeke. They were a little late, but they hadn't missed much. Just Mayor Honeypot's welcoming speech. They all joined in the games, rides, and contests. When it was time for the fireworks, the Bog Brothers livened things up with some music of their own. The next week, the Bog Brothers came over to the Bears Treehouse for dinner. They wore their best clothes and got all spruced up for the occasion. They even brought a housewarming gift. A big pot of Shem's special possum stew. It was delicious! The end. You know, it's never good to judge anybody by the way they look, what they drive, what their house looks like, because they could have a heart of gold. And as in Matthew 22, verse 39 says, love your neighbor as yourself. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.